The visit of Trinidad and Tobago's Prime Minister to Jamaica has been hailed by the government as a success. Dr. Keith Rowley arrived in Jamaica on Sunday, July 17 and departed on July 21 after several bilateral meetings with the government and Jamaica's private sector. But while the government lauds the achievement of the visit, how are others reacting? The initiative has received a passing grade from political analyst and businessman Kevin O'Brien Chang. I think it's a very good visit based on the reaction of the public and the hard to judge these things, but he and Mr. Holness, Andrew Holness, um, seem to have a pretty good rapport, you know. He said them at a cricket match together when Jimmy was playing Trinidad in the CPL. And I think it was well received all around. In fact, I haven't heard any negative comments. And you know, in these things, you know, when people have disagreements or countries, the first thing is communication. Most, a lot of the times when people have disagreements caused by bad communication, and when they get together and talk, they find the problem wasn't as big as they thought. It wasn't even a real problem. So having our two heads of government speak with each other, um, it's a big step in the right direction. And that's how big people deal with matters. They have disagreement, you come face to face and talk. Social commentator and chairman of the New Nation Coalition, Agri Palmer, agrees, praising Rowley's role in the initiative. I think it is an excellent um, gesture, seeing that he is at least admitting that he recognizes that there is an issue to be dealt with or some issues to be dealt with. Any move, any hand outstretched hand should be appreciated. You know, we should always seek, I believe, to, to encourage bilateral relations in any situation. Clearly, um, there is no harm in speaking to, 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 to another party. One of the reasons Dr. Rowley visited Jamaica was to address a protracted immigration issue. Jamaicans have been incensed about the refusal of entry of some Jamaicans into Trinidad and Tobago. Kevin O'Brien Chang believes more Jamaicans may now see prospect in traveling to Trinidad and Tobago with a greater understanding of why refusal of entry may happen. A lot of the things the common man on the street has heard about traveling to Trinidad, a lot of it is just, they just don't know who the reality is. And let's face it, we don't have all angels in Jamaica. And we have scammers and different type of guys here who, you know, that are quote-unquote undesirable, right, even here. And it's not like every Jamaican going to Trinidad is going to have a proper reason for visiting. You're always going to have people trying to pull fast things to go to a country to do things where they're not really supposed to be doing. So Trinidad has every right to vet Jamaica. And if some are turned back, if 3% are turned back, it's not unheard of. I think what Jamaicans do want is that those turned back must be treated with dignity. If, I, if Trinidad has a good reason not to take them, it's their right. But the ones turned back must be treated with dignity. And that's Dr. Rowley spoke directly to that. That they're going to be, you know, they're going to be treated properly if they if not not be letty. So I think what Jamaicans really accept, we don't think we're all angels, that everybody going to Trinidad from Jamaica is legitimate. There are going to be a few who are not legitimate, but as long as they're treated properly, properly sent back and not, not mistreated, that's how the world has to run. As for the issue of the trade barriers and imbalance that exists between Jamaica and Trinidad and Tobago, Mr. O'Brien Chang notes that those aren't likely to change in the short term. We know the reality. Trinidad has cheaper energy costs. That's part of it. But when they use those cheap costs they, to improve their, their structure, their factories are more efficient and all that kind of stuff in the 80s, uh, 70s, 80s and 90s. And we fell behind. While there may be some legitimacy to the Jamaican businessmen's complaint that Trinidad subsidizes their industries, and I think that has to be looked at as a fair playing field, the WTO rules. The fact that Trinidad has a more efficient manufacturing sector has to be accepted. And it's for our businessmen to raise their game and become as efficient. And if we remove those energy subsidies and our businessmen become as efficient, then you'll see a balancing of trade between Jamaica and the Trinidad. Meanwhile, Agri Palmer says what he believes should be the outcome of these bilateral engagements are methods that will result in fair benefits to both countries. Clearly, Trinidad right now is benefiting from a lot of the labor that can come from Jamaica. Jamaica has a larger cadre of, I would say, low-income workers that are willing to work, especially in areas of security, etc. This is labor that is a little scarce in Trinidad. So if we look to see where we can improve some of the, the, the services,
services that we have to offer in Jamaica and make ourselves more marketable and capitalize on those. If we have more land, we can in fact in, increase trading, might be even some agricultural products that are endemic to Jamaica and we can capitalize on this. What, what I think is happening is that there are certain costs here such as the cost of power, which is vastly different between um, Trinidad and Jamaica. And therefore, manufacturing struggles when you try to compare manufacturing in Jamaica and manufacturing in Trinidad. Oh, but in the area of agriculture, let us say, it is quite possible that there are issues that um, in Trinidad where Jamaica could capitalize on this. Our tourism products, we have a lot of expertise here and our tourism workers are well trained. By far, I would say the best trained in the Caribbean. They are sought all over. So here it is. If we really were to look at it and to look at the benefits to both countries, instead of trying to compete against each other, we could work together. Jamaica's Prime Minister Andrew Holness will lead a le delegation to Trinidad and Tobago to continue bilateral talks. A date for that venture has not yet been announced.